Ambition means a relentless pursuit of what um, your purpose in life is. It means um, a unashamed assertiveness around what you want to achieve and how you want to achieve it. And it means following your lit path. So figuring out what lights you up and what your lit path is versus just your path. Uh, I think that's ambition. So are you ambitious? Yes. Why do you think you're this way? <sighs> hmm. Why am I this way? <laughs> I think it's a whole mix of things gosh it's a whole mix of environmental factors obviously that plays in in the sense of how I've been brought up and what I experienced and what opportunities I had growing up and what I felt drawn to seeking out and exploring and exposing myself to which exposed more which you know it's a big flywheel approach there um and realizing uh, that it, there's like infinite possibilities so how could i not be ambitious about the way i approach life um in that sense uh this this yeah it's like a it's like a never ending reaching for more things um and how that plays out within the frame of like having this having these targets um or or just just um, life long pursuits of um hmm now I'm confusing myself, actually. But that, <laughs> there's like there's so many layers to that to that question that I'm just trying to mull that all over. Yeah, it, it comes down to to multiple things and drilling into knowing yourself more. You can you can really answer that on a deeper level, uh, and knowing like all of the all of the facets of my. Um, personality and how I am uh that that definitely gives more of a a more attuned kind of response could you describe for me the most ambitious person that you know other than yourself how well do I have to know them you don't even have to know them personally you can just know oh. them. oh okay just I'm interested in what comes into your mind when I throw that the, the previous question very internally focused if I throw it ex like externally how does it you know how does mm. how does your brain react to this notion of ambition externally? Yeah. one person who jumps into my mind is um elon musk i mean he's yeah i love elon musk really for many reasons um he's ambitious bezos crazy crazy ambition there um and probably yeah perhaps the most or maybe it's musk i don't know in our time right now currently those are the two that are really the most preeminent i guess any any woman that strike you as deeply ambitious yeah i mean aoc i think she's a really great example of an ambitious female right now um also kamala harris to do what she's just done um that's incredible I guess Jacinda, but I know less about that story, kind of having been out of the country. I also think Helen Clark, like I, I interacted with her briefly at the, the UN summit in New York last year, late last year, and I was just like, it really hit me like, whoa, whoa. She's had to be so ambitious to get to where she has gotten to in UN circles, global circles. Also another woman I really admire ambition wise and from New York, um, Mickey Agrawal, who was the one behind Thinks and um, Tushi and like really reframing many of these taboo topics. Yeah, those are the ones that fire through. Is there anything that would enable you to be more ambitious? Hmm. Particularly, I'm interested in the answer to that question now that you're back in New Zealand. 
and yeah oh yeah role models um and like ex direct access to role models and i guess critical mass of of people who are doing things that are truly ambitious and in the same line that i want to also pursue um that's yeah that's an immediate one for sure and the mentoring piece too that's huge how do you think new zealanders view ambition like what's your perception coming back how does it feel to you that the idea of someone who's you know ambitious and spunky is received uh there's a definite dialing down of of how you even talk about ambition um so from a from a even just from a vernacular perspective there's a there's a huge shift and then it, it like bleeds into everything um so like is it a good thing not necessarily i mean it's it's a t it's a sensitive topic that's the kind of vibe i get back here uh and the framing of it has to be very carefully formulated in order for it not to be over the top or offensive or a bit you know on the inappropriate side we also did a survey um mm. in 2018 and like four fifths of the people that responded said they were more ambitious than the average mm. and a lot of people also said they weren't prepared to share what they were ambitious about until they'd achieved it and also that they were, yeah oh yeah and also that people were fine with people sharing other people sharing their ambitions with you but they wouldn't necessarily reciprocate. You're sort of paralleling that men's mental health thing. Wow. Have you seen those stats in New Zealand? Like everyone's no. fine with a mate talking to you if they've got mental health challenges, but like only some tiny proportion are prepared to do it themselves. Mm. Yeah, there's this, it's a kind of complex mix of humility and fear of failure and shame. and. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a whole freaking big topic in and of itself isn't it the the failing faster and the fear of iteration fast iteration here and so i know it sounds really like it probably sounds really cliche the whole fail faster mentality of the valley versus here but it's it's still so true like it's actually not cliche because when you come back to new zealand you're like oh yeah this is this is not a construct that people are um vibing with uh slash cognizant of and how much it will just advantage everyone here if there was more of a stagnation is um is death kind of awareness totally mm. if you were able to change one thing that you've encountered as you've returned like if you if you had a magic wand what mm. would you change in this space in new zealand i think it would be the radical candor piece radical candor at all times which is not happening and everyone's skirting around the edges and therefore nobody's actually knowing what anyone thinks or is actually doing or is actually working on. So, and, and, and in terms of being able to, you know, collaborate effectively with people or, or um, cross pollinate around the ecosystem. It's for me, it comes down to a truth, truth seeking piece actually. Have you, well, here's a question about the, the difference between the male and female perspectives on this. Is that coming through strongly? Because that's obviously coming back. It hits you, hits me very much. Um, the, the old boys network and just the homogeneity of men in the ambition bracket. It's interesting. There's no difference in terms of how, um, like by gender, there's really no difference mm. in terms of how ambitious people say they are but their experience of being able to express it is very different like that comes up in our interviews you don't like I, I interviewed um a young woman who'd returned from London like last week who said yeah like me being female was not an issue in London it just wasn't even part of the equation and here it is so yeah mm. I think there's, there's a lot to do in terms of moving a generation on to make space for people being taken is who they are not like what they are wow okay i don't know i mean how long have you been back for it's not long is it 
No. Are you bumping she, up against this kind of stuff? Yes, hugely. Yeah. Yeah. Why um, my sister and I have launched Super Tilt the, and the Brain Gain and all of that. Um, and it's a real process of like continual discovery of issue after issue. Like, for example, today we're just talking this morning about the um, next podcast on Super Tilt. Did you see, by the way, there was Super Tilt on Spotify's only just launched, but we've got two episodes up already. Um, and anyway, the next one is going to be on the alumnification of New Zealand and how that contrasts with um, when you're, you know, stateside and the college effect and what that translates mm -hmm, to with mm -hmm. um, jobs and hiring and the tech. Yeah etc but it's really the more we got into it it was like whoa this is shocking actually what's happening in terms of high schools um and and that background here completely determining what your future is in New Zealand mm -hmm. and this is why I'm like a part of me and wants to just be like really isolated in New Zealand well my sister and I were actually going down to Wanaka probably where we hardly know anyone but we're going down there at start of next year because I don't want to get too ingrained into New Zealand community the culture place. yeah place. for fear of um here yeah, changing back too much to this to this stereotype here so like yeah no you can press yourself down if you are surrounded yeah. by it. It's, the network effect is real like whether mm. you're surrounded by ambitious people or you're surrounded by people who want you to shrink down mm. you kind of you, you kind of react to what the what the context is yeah right so you're probably talking to maybe quite a few people that are coming back to NZ and yeah yeah and not wanting to immerse too much in the culture because they'll 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 lose what they had and lose who they are yeah like even I'd go that far. Like it's not just mm. what they had; it's it's literally who they have become. Mm. Going going out of their comfort zone. Um, mm. Like so many people talk of this experience of being able to shoot for anything overseas because nobody's going to judge you and no one's going to care if, if you know if you fall on your mm. face. And then you come back and it's like people are trying to compress you and fit you into a smaller space. A lot of people yeah. that, that conversation we had on you know on WhatsApp around you know, put you in a box that, that literally comes up a lot in the, particularly with women returnees in the interviews. Wow. You know, I feel like I'm being put in a box. Mm. You know, I didn't feel that in London. I didn't feel that in San Diego. I didn't, you know, it's yeah. very, very interesting. So you're not coming back partly because of that, actually? Yeah, I feel like I need to keep a, keep a foot here. Yeah. Because when I come back, I do feel myself shrinking mm. to fit. And I don't want to do that. God damn. What Hi. was I going to say about um, Nelson? Oh, partly why, why we're out here in Piha, being in our own little mm -hmm. box, our little psychic box, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Basically, yeah. you know, like shielding, shielding yes, from. Yes, too much, literally yeah. shielding. Yeah, yeah. Literally shielding. 